Hey there, uh, again welcome back to my channel. After understanding the short term and the intermediate regulatory mechanisms for VP regulation, let's try and understand the long term regulation of blood pressure. The regulatory mechanisms which are under the long term regulation, they take sometimes days, weeks or even months after a constant change in blood pressure to kick in. Basically, there are again two mechanisms under the long term regulation. One is what is called as the renal body fluid shift feedback mechanism and another one is the famous renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. So let's try and understand what is this renal body fluid feedback mechanism. Again, dependent upon the fluid. So let's say there is a reduction in the extracellular fluid volume okay so whenever there is a reduction in the extracellular fluid volume there is going to be a reduction in the blood pressure now reduction in the blood pressure is going to cause a reduction in the glomerular filtrate rate this reduction in the glomerular filtrate rate is what is now sensed by the kidney so kidney is the sense organ here now what does the kidney do is kidney does two things here first thing here what the kidney does is it begins to retain the fluid and second thing what the kidney does is it also begins to retain the salt in the form of sodium so when there is retention of both fluid and salt what this is going to do is this is going to increase the amount of extracellular fluid and hence it is going to increase the blood pressure. So basically, whenever there is a reduction in the extracellular fluid levels, the kidney is going to retain the fluid along with the salt and hence bringing back the fluid level to the normal and because of that the blood pressure is going to come back to normal. In another scenario, let's say wherein there is an increase in the extracellular fluid volume. So, whenever there is an increase in the extracellular fluid volume, there is an increase in the blood pressure and hence there is also an increase in the GFR. Again, this increase in the GFR is what is sensed by the kidneys. And what do the kidney do here? The kidney does exactly the opposite of what it had done. When the extracellular fluid volume had reduced. So, what it's gonna do? First thing is it is gonna excrete out this excessive amount of fluid which is accumulated in the body. Along with that, it is also going to excrete out the sodium. So, excretion of excessive amount of fluid and excretion of sodium is going to bring back. The fluid level to normal. Now this is going to bring back the blood pressure. Okay, so because of a rise in blood pressure, there is an excretion of the fluid from the kidney, and this process is what is called as pressure natriuresis. And when there is also excretion of salt, okay. Oh, sorry, this is what is called as pressure diuresis. This is called as the pressure diuresis. And when there is excretion of salt, that is what is called as pressure diuresis. Okay, so this is renal body fluid feedback mechanism. The second mechanism is our renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So, this mechanism is going to sense a fall in the blood pressure. So, whenever there is a fall in the blood pressure, this is sensed by an apparatus which is present in the kidney, which is called as juxtra glomerular apparatus. And in the juxtra glomerular apparatus, there are special cells which are called as JG cells which are nothing but the juxtaglomerular cells. 
So these dextroglomerular cells are going to act like baroreceptors and they sense this fall in the blood pressure. So whenever there is a fall in the blood pressure, these JG cells are going to secrete a hormone which is called as renin. Okay, and what do this renin do? Renin is going to convert angiotensinogen into a compound which is called as angiotensin 1. Okay, so this angiotensinogen is a plasma protein derived from liver. Okay, and this angiotensin 1 will be now acted upon by one more enzyme which is called as angiotensin converting enzyme. And this angiotensin converting enzyme is coming from lungs and it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now, this angiotensin 2 has got three very important functions. Okay. One is that this angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor. Okay. Second thing is that this angiotensin 2 can directly act on the kidney and it can cause reabsorption of both water as well as salt that is sodium and the third action is that this angiotensin 2 it can also stimulate the adrenal gland and adrenal gland is going to produce a hormone which is called as aldosterone which is a mineralocorticoid now what do this aldosterone do aldosterone is also going to cause reabsorption of sodium and along with that there is also going to be reabsorption of water so these three actions that is vasoconstriction direct action on the kidneys causing retention of sodium and water and then an indirect action on the kidneys via aldosterone which is again causing retention of sodium and water all these three things are going to increase the blood pressure okay this angiotensin 2 is also converted to angiotensin 3 okay angiotensin 3 is also a vasoconstrictor but it is said to be only 40 percent as potent as angiotensin 2 okay so this is how the long-term regulatory mechanisms are going to work okay so thank you for listening to my video and this is where we complete all the three mechanisms the short term intermediate and the long term regulatory mechanisms of the blood pressure hope you have liked my description if you have liked kindly subscribe to my channel and share this video as much as possible see you again with a new topic in a very short time thank you